Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael P. Roman. Tens of thousands of dreamers in New York City and across the country are facing a Thursday deadline to renew their status under DACA, the Obama-era program that allows undocumented immigrants who came into the United States as children to stay and to work. Last month, the Trump administration announced that it was winding down the program and that it was giving Congress six months to create some sort of replacement legislation. If that doesn't happen, 800,000 dreamers will begin losing their legal status. And that means that young people like our next guest would no longer be allowed to work here and could actually face deportation. Antonio Alarcón came to the United States from Mexico with his family when he was 10 years old. Now 23, and in his last semester at Queens College, he has one year left under DACA. After that, he faces legal limbo. Alarcón is also an immigration activist working for Make the Road New York, an advocacy organization currently suing the Trump administration over its decision to end DACA. Antonio Alarcón joins me now. Antonio, thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me here. So, Antonio, first of all, tell us a little bit about your situation. How did you get to this country, and what's your DACA status now? Well, I came uh, to the United States in 2005 with my parents, just as many other dreamers, crossing the border with our parents and established here. I established myself here in New York since then. Uh, I've been going through the through education system. In 2012, my parents uh, returned to Mexico and I decided to stay here because I wanted to be the first one in, in my family to go to college. And that same year, I also applied for DACA when it was announced. And since then, I've been having DACA and I already applied for, for three times. Uh, so this is my last uh, renewal. It was my last renewal, so I don't know what's going to happen with me, you know, uh, now that it's, uh, it's in the limbo, DACA. And your parents went back to Mexico five years ago because you have a younger brother and your grandparents were taking care of him and they died. Correct. So now you're separated. You've been separated from them for five years. Yeah, and this is something that happens every day with, with, with our families, right? Like many of our parent, um, grandparents or family members died and many of our parents aren't able to go back to and see them for the last right. time. Yeah. You know, Antonio, as I was reading uh, about DACA for this segment and for other segments that I've been doing on DACA, uh, I was surprised to learn just how limited how cumbersome, and, and how expensive it is. I wonder if you could give us a little summary of how the process of DACA works. Yeah, so DACA, it's, uh, it's just a work permit for two years, and, and every two years you have to renew it. It only allows you to stay in the country uh, without the fear of deportation. Uh, it, gives you, it gives you a social security number, but that's it, right? Like you are not allowed to travel outside the country just as any other resident or citizen of the United States. Uh, as an undocumented student, you are not able to apply for financial aid. So it's very limited on, on, on in many ways. Uh, and it's, as you mentioned, it's $500 now. It was it used to be for, for 65 now it's, it's almost $500. So uh, over the years has been increasing and now it's, it's out of the and way. it's not guaranteed that you're going to be renewed if you already have it. You have to go through a whole background check over again. Correct. It's pretty uh, cumbersome. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Which is sometimes many of, of the undocumented youth might have a misdemeanor, and that sometimes might trigger uh, not being able to reapply. Now, before Obama instituted DACA, he said many times that he didn't have the power to institute DACA because it, it would have been unconstitutional. Uh, a lot of legal scholars agree with his original contention. So, given the the limits of DACA and its legal precariousness. Wasn't it a good thing to send it to Congress for them to make it into a law? Well, we know that um, different actions, is, it's, it has been there for years. Uh, DACA, it's another part of implementing of this. Uh, but executive, executive orders is not the first thing that a president does. Uh, we have seen other executive orders before, and this is not something unconstitutional, and that's why we're going into courts right now. Uh, obviously, Congress have the ability to pass a DREAM Act. They haven't done it for 16 years, which is the time that we have been fighting for the DREAM Act. So um, that's, that's why today we're fighting and pushing for uh, legislation that is broader, and it's not only a work authorization, right? We, we need to make sure that as DREAMers we fight for something better, not only for ourselves, but also Describe for Describe that. Give us a quick uh, summary of what your ideal dream, dream act would look like? Yeah, the dream act that we're fighting now, it's a uh, path to citizenship with five years, um, uh, able to, to travel outside the country and visit uh, many of our families who have been separated. Um, also, not um, not any money into the into the wall, that w which is one so of the For triggers. the wall. Yeah, we don't want any money for the wall and we don't want any militarizations in our communities. You know, Antonio, last month, 
uh, some DACA activists shouted down Nancy Pelosi, the minority leader in Congress, uh, because they don't like the fact that she's negotiating with the president and with the Republicans to get a DREAM Act passed. Now, does it make sense to shout down the people who are trying to get a DREAM Act passed, people who are on your side? Some people might, might disagree with the action that, that many of activists did in, in California. However, this is the same way that we were able to pass DACA, right? Like many, in many of the rallies that, that President Obama was having at the time, many of the, of the undocumented youth shot, uh, shot President Obama, right, in order to pass DACA. So this is not something new. Uh, and again, like politicians sometimes just may uh, say words and they don't do actions. So that's why we, tr we need to make sure that we're not only uh, talking to them, but we also uh, need to make sure that we're doing actions and they understand that we're not going to give uh, any step uh, back. Now, Illinois Senator Dick Durbin, who was the original co-author of the DREAM Act back in 2001, 16 years ago, said this. It is naive for us to believe that we will get 12 Republicans to vote for DACA or the DREAM Act without putting something on the table. There's always going to be a group that wants more. There are some people who want all or nothing. Are you pushing for all or nothing? We're not pushing not, not for all or nothing. We're pushing for something that is comprehensive and something that we believe is realistic. Like mo many of us have been living for 10 or more years in the United States. So we want to make sure that we are recognized as Americans th because that's what we are. Uh, we are human beings, we are Americans, and we also deserve an opportunity in this country. So Antonio, all the Democrats, or at least almost all the Democrats, want to pass a DREAM Act. A lot of Republicans say they want to pass a DREAM Act, both in the Senate and the House. And the president says he wants to see a DREAM Act. So what do you think? Will there be a DREAM legislation signed by the president next year? Well, that's the hope, and that's also something that we are looking for. Uh, we, we need to make sure that we are pushing uh, the legislators, just as Pelosi and Schumer, to make sure that they pass the DREAM Act within the next six months. And then, if not, we need to make sure that we are educating the community on, on other ways that they're, uh, they're, they're, that they're there is in order for, for us to work legally in the United States, such as like uh, building your own companies, right? Something that not many people know about it, but there's ways for, for you to work here. So let me ask you, so what happens if they don't come up with legislation? What will happen to you and other dreamers? Yeah, well, for many of us, it's uh, sometimes uh, deportation. Sometimes it's able to stay here in the country and just work legally, right? Uh, going back into the workforce probably uh, and in jobs that we're not uh, right now capable because many of the dreamers are very well educated. They have college degrees. So now maybe going back into the workforce of restaurants and like- You mean you know, go back into the shadows? Definitely not to the shadows. Maybe uh, we're taking uh, maybe a step back in, in terms of you know education or work related, uh, but definitely not back into the shadows. I think we have been building the momentum, and we will continue to do so. So, what's what's your thinking? Are you optimistic? I'm very optimistic, but I, again, as an organizer, I need to make sure that my community is also uh, on the same level, and, and we need to make sure that we are protesting, taking the streets, uh, and taking Congress as well. All right, Antonio, thank you so much. No worries. <laughs>